Hello, good afternoon uh, subscribers. This is uh, the first video that I'm making, so most likely a lot will need to be corrected <laughs> at some point. So very quickly, we have a lot of stock. So if I have to go through all of them, then the, uh, at, with great detail, then the video is going to be very long. I'm already wasting time. So for everybody, please take the time to watch the entire video. Hence, you will have uh, the most out of it. If you're skimming it or you're watching it at high speed, you're going to miss out so, so certain things. So we said that because this week we only have four days of trading, it's wise to use uh, not this Friday expiration, but um, um, May, uh, not June the 5th expiration. And obviously, depending on the position, there are strategies that uh, actually can make you uh, be use the expiration for this week versus the expiration of the other week. Uh, I leave it to you how you want to manage that. Uh, for those who are monthly or higher or yearly, uh, you know that you have at least one free one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. And during that coaching, we can talk about those strategies, how to manage a position where you're going to have literally nine days, uh, potentially, if you buy a contract expiring on uh, June the, the 5th. I hope that's clear enough. So without any further ado, let us go in. Literally, there are 14 stars. Actually, there are even more than that. I had to stop some, so, somewhere. So uh, let's see. The first, I'm going to go through them by the order of um, intensity, if you will, meaning that there are two types of signal. This, this, I'm going to start with the red signal. So the red signal are Wells Fargo, Gilead, uh, HES, AAL, um, FedEx, Microsoft. I think I even forgot one of them that I don't trade that much that I didn't give you. Uh, well, maybe I will mention that. That's uh, uh, the steel company X. Uh, yeah, because he had that signal on the 21st, the same signal on the 21st. So without a vessel, so let's go in, in here. So Wells Fargo, pretty much all the stock did this pattern where they didn't move that much, right? So Wells Fargo has the particularity that there were prints on it. So you can check on your flow algo. This is the value of flow algo, folks. So what can we say on flow algo? On uh, Wells Fargo, rather. It had prints on it all, all of last week up to Thursday. And along with BAC as well that I gave you, which is uh, a, one of the smaller signals. So both, they are part of the financial, they're going to be trading alike. So if you are trading one, don't feel as if the other one should relatively be, be, be close onto here. So this is where we are. When this signal come in, this signal is a very rare signal on Wells Fargo. Uh, over the last, hundred, uh, the last 200 days, it had only happened four times. And it played bullishly half of the time. That, that much I, I, I can tell you, but a, uh, a, sig a, a signal like this one, uh, typically you could even have a beta lock entering for calls when it is, um, when it pulls back a little bit. So typically it tends to go up about 4%, by 4%, uh, all of those 50% of the time, and it tends to go down by about 6%. So this stock now, obviously 200 days, that takes us back a, 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 long, a long while, right? When the stock was uh, $46. At this type of level, those moves in percentage is going to be amplified. Meaning that don't be surprised if let's say, okay, there is a five, six, or even God's no 10% because there are print on it. So I don't know if this thing is going to be testing the 22s or the natural resistance on here, as you can see, obviously it's by default. That's, I invite you to read the chart, please. I know some of you are going to be do, doing that. Let me remove this here because it has no value. Natural resistance here or overhead is that's a moving average 20, which stand at $25. So we are at, so, so a dollar on this stock, as you can see, is almost 5%. So you see, so uh, 25 calls on, on these things, uh, they, they, they get you that natural resistance. Obviously, if it drops below uh, this bar here, below 24, then uh, we are looking at it to be testing the lower lows. So there, here you have it. Your range is 22 on the bottom and then 24 on the upper. I'm not going to analyze the B, uh, BA specifically for that, but the same type of rule applies on, on, on here, really, and it, it even has a smaller price. So that's one down. 13 more to go. The second one is Gilead. Gilead is a stock that has been very funny. Uh, trading. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look, look at this. This is the daily chart, folks. 
granted, I didn't go on the week on Wells Fargo, so that's uh, mistake number one, right? I always say that I do to different time frames. So here we are on here. We we have been doing sideways on 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 here. So yeah, 20, 22, 22 below 22 and a half, or trying to go to 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 recover on here. It could do a candle like this one on here, meaning it goes up uh, and it actually go up by by. Don't be surprised, folks. Again, a wild move is coming onto here. I wouldn't. 10% in one in whatever direction. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Especially if we, we are to have the expiration, not this Friday, but the following Friday. Okay, so let me try to keep up <laughs> with my own pace on here. So we were talking about Gilead. Gilead, a lot has been going on on, on, on this one on here. So geez, at, uh, it will look like we're at support, right? This thing has been trading literally between 70. You buy it at 70, you sell it when it approaches 80. If you have done that, so you have made a lot of money since uh, February. So here we are at 73. This signal on Gilead, when it comes out, uh, there, there have been six such signals uh, over the last 200 days. It's uh, two-thirds of the time is bullish. And the percentage by which it goes up, it's about 7%. And uh, the percentage by which it goes down, it's actually very small. It's not even minus 1%. So meaning that this year, it's a heavy bias on calls. And so by 7%, 7% here is about $5 or anything. I mean, for, for me, or during the course of that, I just buy the 80 calls. They're going to be cheap and wait for it. You can sell it at 78, whatever, and make money if, if that's the pattern is really that. I mean, if they want to drop it further, uh, so for hedging, if things start really going bad, I mean, 70 is that natural resistance here. How do we know that's resistance? Oh, resistance, support, rather, the number of touches, the number of touches, as, as usual. All right, two down, 12 to go. So the next one is HES. This is the um, oil industry. This is another wild stock. I remember, maybe I will waste time on there. At some point on here, I wanted to trade it based on this signal here, and I missed that. I was mad at myself because in a matter of four days, this thing went from $35 to 43. I was banking on the 40 calls. So yeah, that's um so now that we are here, notice it has been trying to fill this gap for the longest of time. Actually, they haven't allowed it all the way to go to 50. So now then this signal comes in. God know what's gonna go because here we, we came back down, right? This is a wild one, guys. It wouldn't be the first stock that I will I will pick. Why? Because I can tell you that those options are not very liquid. You're going to find that the open interest on some of some of the strikes is going to be very low. So I'm not saying that to stay away on this one, but do not uh, be aggressive with it. Really, do, do not be aggressive with it. It's just, just, that, that's just, just my feeling on it. It's, it's a hard to trade one. It's hard to trade because the spread, the day, any, whenever you're going to be trying to buy it, it's just going to be wild. Hence... I haven't traded with it for, for a long time, but typically when it moves, oh yeah, it, 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 it does move. So here it's a support, right? So if you want to trade it, just use the support, the, the, the exponential moving average. Below them, you are bearish and above them. So above a clear target here will be what, 50? Yeah, like $3 is nothing for this guy when, when they want him to, to make those all stock go. So 50 on the, 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 the high side, um, or maybe you try 44 or, or lower. On again, if again, not if, since we are using that extended window, really be prepared all of this trade that you are going to have your main position and then you're going to be able to scalp and do day trading on them on maybe the, an opposite direction. That was for Hesse. Uh, the next one, again, we are still talking about uh, the, the strongest of the signals on here. I wanted to start with those. American Airlines, oh my goodness, are you in a mood for this? I, for me, I'm not in a mood for trading. I know I had to put it there, but in a mood of trading less than $10 stock. So, guys, what's going on here? Because, yeah, another one where at the end of the week, we're going to have a 10% move, whatever. But, I mean, they, they have been supporting this. Uh, yeah, it came all the way to 8. So, so you play 10 10 call, you know, it's 970. I mean, 10 calls, they're not going to do anything. Besides, I've noticed, again, I'm not deterring you from uh, uh, any stock, but just you will have to make a choice, right? So when, when you have a list of 14, that's what for me, I really, but they, 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 the trigger came as they came. So for me, again, another one that is not my primary choice. I, American Airlines is not my primary choice. So uh, can, it, can it go above 
because this has been the yellow line, the moving average 20 has been resistance for five days now. So can, can they let it go? And uh, it has, we can run, it has room to run, but uh, hey, I wouldn't be surprised that this thing keep push, putting lower lows. So for me, I'm gonna play the trend to say that if I'm trading this, I'm waiting for it to somehow show a weakness, actually to try to, 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 to go above resistance and then um, go the other way. So when let's say it touches 10, I'm gonna take nine puts that if I played it, but it's not my primary trust. I guarantee you that there are many, many others one that I can highlight. So we talked about um, X. Yeah, that's another one. It, I, I don't think I put it on the list, so maybe I'm, I'm not, not maybe I'm not gonna talk about it here. I'm going to jump to FedEx. FedEx is a stock. Again, you guys know my uh, propensity <laughs> to stock that have the highest price, meaning because those when they move. You, you, you see subsequent things. So stock above $100 versus stock at $9. I'd rather trade the stock above $100. I explained, I think I've explained why. If you do not know, we can talk about that as well. So perfect case here. So last week it jumped, gap up, and then the rest of the, 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 the week uh, si sideway action. Oh boy, well, what are they going to do? What do they have in store for us on here? Because that 105 is looking mildly possible, right? Because this trend, Sideways come down. Sideways, we are coming down again. So this is a range of possibility. Just as much as they did on here. So the target that we are going to be giving here is the yellow line, the, the green line here, exponential moving average 50 period, which is at 121. So 121 calls. And then on the on, on the put side, uh, if you were one protection or a hedge, 105 uh, or 110. Yeah, but 105 will be, will be much cheaper on anything, and you have time on them. So depending on what's happened on the broader market. Uh, next one, next and not actually the least one, if anything, my, the two that for me I will really, will be the FedEx one and then Microsoft here. Microsoft resemble exactly SPY, right? So by now you know why. You, you know why. Microsoft is the biggest contributor. It's even bigger than Apple in the top 10 holdings of SPY, believe it or not. Yep, this is a stock that uh, a lot of people bank on. I mean, they, you, you can just look, look at this chart here, folks. Look, look at this chart. I can't even go as far back as 2016. That's bring bad, bad memory. I'm gonna leave it at that. There's a story for those who know my trading history, what happened in 2016. So, uh, where are we here? Oh my goodness, so much sideways, so much sideways. So very, very just straightforward. 190 calls. They can, they can make this to do that in two days. Oh, actually, let's say even by, if this, the market gap up, it's uh, the futures are not open yet, but by gapping up within a day and a half, they can go to 190, so that, that's not a problem. And then we can play support the yellow line in this case 180 but that's really too close so i will say 175 in case you want a hedge so on there a move this move is going to be big this move is going to be big because typically after they do sideways they like to just make it explode so that 190 is, is, is nothing so it's mirroring spy so meaning spy everybody has been talking about 300 right always know the broader market condition environment when you are trading a, any stock especially stock that have that much weighting into our bigger index spy. All right, okay, it took us about half of the time to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, or there about. A, a specific a mention here on IBB, the ETF for, for, for the, the biopharma. So you saw that we talked about Gilead. So it had that signal as well, but it's a slow moving thing where I'm seeing just 1% and it's very rare for it. So IBB is some, maybe something that, uh, for those who have the heart for it, I mean, lately, I mean, IBB, you could have just day trade that or, or anything because a lot of companies are coming up. Oh, we are doing a vaccine on this, that and that, and they will contribute to, 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 to this, uh, obviously. So that side reaction there of last week, maybe some consolidation for it just to pop back up to, to 136 or so. But it's a slow moving thing. I wouldn't use it really that much. All right, so now that gets us to the more uh, prominent type of uh, setup that we see more often. So the difference is that the one that I just mentioned, Western Digital, not Western Digital, Wells Fargo, Gilead, Hesse, 
uh, FedEx, Microsoft, AAL, or even IBB, they are rare, meaning that when something like this happens, we really expect a bigger, a big, a big, a big move. So, uh, oh yeah, and on Microsoft, did I say that on Microsoft, two thirds of the time, but it's only three instances. So, meaning three times only over the last 200 days, that signal that we saw on Microsoft has happened. And two thirds of the time, it has been bullish. And when it was bullish, a gain of 2%. And uh, when it was bearish, actually, it didn't move that much negatively. So a heavy bias on here on for calls on, uh, on Microsoft. Uh, then we go to, I'm looking at uh, the, the remainder of the list on here. So we talked about Wells Fargo. So let's now talk about the ones um, that occur more often. Okay, FX, uh, Freeport, Mac Moran, it had prints. So check the prints on um, on your flow algo. So this is a perfect case of okay, we are at support. So being bullish here uh, because it has have a hard time trying to get to ten or even nine and a half. Oh geez, that has been a struggle. So uh, yeah, this setup on here has already gone into a specific direction. So this one my i can say that you can because I, I know it's because those options are very liquid um except when they're playing small games toward the end of the day or, or there you you can play calls not to spend that much money you can play calls because in any case if you want to go uh nine and a half is something that it should reach uh, this friday now if you are sitting on wednesday and you played it for this coming friday and you're saying oh telex again like please the the when you are in a position, I mean, just your, the way that your mind goes about thinking about it will influence your decision and the, eventually the outcome out of that trade. So um, understand that these stocks, we don't control how they move. So when you're in a position, it's Wednesday, you have expiration on Friday. It's okay. It's okay. And in that case, then you're getting to know yourself. If you're uncomfortable, let's say that you are down, I don't know, 25%, 30%. On, on, on Wednesday on a position, uh, you can hedge, please. I encourage you to do that. A hedge and um, in, in that case, you can sleep better and it's okay. At the end of the day, the worst that could happen is maybe that you don't gain out of it, but not losing is actually a victory by itself. If you can guarantee that, oh, we never draw down on our account, <laughs> that we can only increase it up, I will take certain days where I'm just flat. So uh, th this, this guy here, a uh, lot of sideways has been going on. Let's see if it can go into one of these runs and attack those upper Bollinger. Obviously, if it breaks uh, the, 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 the yellow line there at 8.65 on Friday, I watched this thing like, oh, remember, this was one of our, our lotto last week, right? Um, we actually made money on it. Not that much. We made money because, remember, the puts, they were 18 cents and... Um, the call though at 12 so i said that for us we didn't have any bias so meaning we were using a one-on-one -on -one to one ratio and the calls actually ended up being worth 36 cents so they double to so that delta of 662 so or the contract i don't know how convenient we were not that aggressive on it but it was just one of those uh, but yeah this is one of the stock less than ten dollars that i can i can i can trade with because sometimes when it moves yeah, they, this move, these moves here or these other moves here before everything was said, they were, they were a nice move. They were a nice move. And in the past, uh, put it, I mean, when, when things settle, go, go back to normal. I don't know when back to normal. Yeah, we, we, use, we used to make a lot of money out of this. We, we, I, when, when it returns to that, let, let, let's wait here to see, okay, if they are done doing this zigzag. You see this zigzag? So the next move up, now you can establish this pattern. That's what technical study is all about. Some of you who are doing one-on-one, -on -one, you already know that. So, but I digress. Let's carry on. So that was FCX, uh, Freeport, Freeport McMoran. Uh, next on the list on here for us is NVIDIA. NVIDIA, we have a double reason to trade NVIDIA this, this coming week, right? Because you can trade NVIDIA because the signal, but you can trade NVIDIA because it's the second day after earning. You know about that by now. That's a strategy that you should be studying as you go through your thing to say hey you have as these stocks have opportunity the second day after earnings so we have that earnings uh, late after market close on thursday and then on friday was the first day they traded bullish bullishly on that friday on that last friday i mean you had your chance uh within the first uh, 
literally the first 30 minutes. After that, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. That's where, remember what we said, right? Meaning if you was uh, one of those gangster move to just try to buy cheap calls, you would have you could have got you have, could have got a a great entry here. Uh, I was busy on Baba uh, and I didn't do it on Nvidia. So by the time I look up, uh, yeah, granted they went to three fifty nine, then came back. They always give you a chance, five dollars. So from three fifty five to three sixty, you could have gotten seven dollars. Yeah, that was but it wasn't clean. It wasn't a clean a clean shot. But we're gonna have a clean shot this week. No worries about that. We're going to have a clean shot because where I'm sitting, uh, we have, it didn't gap up really per se. It gapped up a little, but I mean, are they okay with it? Or are they just going to blast this thing now to 400? Because guys, there, there's, NVIDIA is one of those stocks. I mean, I traded NVIDIA again in 2016. Some of you have told you the story. So NVIDIA was trading at 30 something dollars. Let me put it a weekly chart on here. Um... So May 2016 was my entrance into the world of NVIDIA. So that's where AI was the beginning of it. So that ride, the, the last day of, of, uh, of, of 2016, when it blasts to 200, it was something epic. I, I wish, actually, you can replay it. So if you have TradingView and you have the, 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 the pay version, which allows you to look at a smaller granularity. You can look at mo a daily, monthly, and um, yearly in, on the free version. For smaller granularity, you need the pro, ver the pro version at least. So you look at how NVIDIA closed on December 30, the last day of 2016. So that was the 27th. It was a thing of beauty. <laughs> that, <that's, coughs> excuse me, that, that was something else. Okay, so I digress. So where are we going to be playing? NVIDIA is a candidate, obviously, for day trade. Now, if they gap it up or whatever they do, um, you can use your upper Bollinger limits on here. But to make money on NVIDIA, again, for me, I really, really like on this big, 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 big price stock, 300 something dollar you. Don't be afraid to take out of the money, especially calls. If you have time, right, you're going to have a week and a half or so to, 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 to use that. If you are just day trading, it, it's okay because you made the, the commitment from the get-go after your nightly analysis that, hey, at the end of the day, if you take that position, you're going to be resolving it and not carrying overnight. So, and as usual, hedging is our best friend into any type of scenario. So, that's that for NVIDIA. Uh, the next one on the, that was on the list, I was surprised by that, but hey guys, I don't make up this stuff. I just follow the system. Oh, what, let, let me tell you then the percentage on NVIDIA. NVIDIA, when it out of this signal, it happened 28 times. So that's, that's the average about this type of signal for most stocks. It was only bullish 40% of the time. And uh, the average gain on the upside was about 4% and on, on the downside was about minus 3.5%. So, hmm, hmm, NVIDIA kind of behave like the market because it's one of those that they are using now. It's inside of SPY, it's part of SPY, but it's very close actually to being in the top 10. I kid you not, soon, soon, <laughs> when, when they update it, it may, it may be. So, um, watch, watch NVIDIA here because it could be a case of we show you something early and then the rest of the week we show you something else. So yeah, always be prepared for that. Uh, 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 it will be, I will have it on my radar. Uh, second and third day momentum trade, that, that's always uh, good. So we're saying that the next one here is IQ. Obviously, you know what has been going on with Chinese stocks. Uh, don't need to come back under. Boy, IQ, what an underperformer. But guys, look, look at something though. I mean, if I'm doing, I haven't traded IQ that much, has been a while. But I mean, for me here, you see this? It almost obeying Mr. Peter, uh, Mr. Peter rule. Uh, is that Peter or, or Mr. Sam rule? From lower Bollinger to upper Bollinger, well, granted, it didn't touch upper Bollinger, it touched the natural, uh, the, the natural, easy to say, uh, moving average on here, then back down, then here, here, back down, back here, and so, my friend. Are we going back to 18? I mean, they say trading is difficult. I mean, 
It hasn't been since uh, since mid March. If you're trading IQ, they have been doing zigzags. <laughs> no, it the, where it is. I mean, it, it, if it let it go, that's where we go to the weekly, my friend, right? So if we if we let it go, this is nobody guess because at fifteen dollars and fifty cents, uh, this thing they, they they if I don't know what what's happening with those China stock and what, what what's gonna be happening. They can really, really let go. And, and something like this, you day trade. Look at this on Friday. So from $18, uh, no, that was the weekly. That was the weekly. That was the weekly, my friend. Oh, come on now. I was like, that's what steal. So yeah, either for me, most likely blast it the other way. So what's the probability of this trade? So 42% of the time out of 31 is played heavily bullish with an average upside of 4.4%. And But when it plays bearish, is an average set of minus 5.3. So meaning this stock is wild. This stock is wild. So over a nine day period, and all of these statistics folks are over a six day period, mind you. So a, a, a week time. So over uh, nine days that you're gonna have, uh, don't be afraid to take uh, outside or uh, way out of the money uh, strike because they, they are going to be less expensive and you have time. Uh, so uh next one after iq so after iq who do we have so western digital oh lord oh lord western digital again so <laughs> we're talking with somebody recently in one-on-one -on -one. we say i said that there were times where i was considering i trade only one stock what i there was a year i think or a span of two years western digital <laughs> You would have just made money on that stock, you, but you didn't have to commit to it as oh, because when some certain people interpret that as oh, let me just buy calls. No, 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 no. It was, it was just that a stock that is moving. Remember, that's what at least me I'm interested in or in option. Meaning, I don't, I want, I don't want stock that are doing sideways because data is being is is, is being exhausted. So, uh, back to Western Digital on here. So, classic inside bar at the support, right? Uh, the yellow line. Uh, it's one of those you have to be patient. You have seen my trade. So for some of you now, I think in two occasions, we have made money since I've been with you guys on the Discord channel. Two occasions where we made money on, on, on Western Digital. One day, we bought the, 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 the contract on Thursday. It popped on Friday. And then at the other time, with, uh, we, we, with um, my, my good friend, uh, Mr. What's his name? Spy, uh, Spark City. <laughs> Future Doctor Spike City. <laughs> we had a great session on uh, on this this past weekend. So um yeah, so Western Digital again here. Um it really anything goes on, on this thing. So the later you come to expiration, the closer you are to expiration, the more explosive the, the move the moves go, go, is going to be. So some someday it can jump a dollar and a half or anything, and you're like, oh geez, it was that possible. So for us, we're gonna maintain those natural lines. So 44 calls. As usual, you see now you should have at least three instances. This will it will be your third instance opportunity to make money out of Western Digital. And I mean, we could have had more because after this move here, look at this one. A little bit like this one. So they've been doing okay. So same pattern on here. Okay. Bow, man, bow, 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 bow. So what's next? A little bit of this and that. This is a good stock to trade, folks. <laughs> this is a good stock to trade. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to put it on the top of the rotation. So, yeah. And again, you just use the natural uh, resistance le level on here. So, that 44 level for you, it's a way. And you know that on the bottom, if you ever find it, you can put that alert, generate that alert such that it's always there, regardless of it being a trigger. Uh, on, on any of one of these weeks, uh, you just put that, hey, when it comes to about is below, what's, what's the level on here? The open on that day was what, 38 and a half or so? You know that it's support. If you violate that support, you know it's straight up puts all the way. But if it bounces all of that support, you're going to have to entry for cheap calls. Okay, let's move on. Let's carry on. So we were at Western Digital. We talked about Microsoft already. Oh, Boeing is still part of this list. Oh boy. All right. Well, I missed Boeing last week. And I don't know if uh, some of you, if you were fortunate to trade Boeing last week, you made a lot of money because that momentum from the, the, the bottom path. But now there's no room on the upper side. So for me, guys, I don't know. 
I will be tempted to think, but Boeing is difficult to trade. So I don't know what, what they're gonna be doing. Depending, this is the major component on the Dow, right? So when Boeing was bullish, I traded Boeing uh, March 11, 2019. That the, was the one biggest contract, I think, when that plane crashed in Ethiopia. So that, that was unfortunate. I did not preview to that information. It's just that the setup here, after this massive run, so I, I, I took puts on there overnight on a Friday and on Monday, that thing happened on Sunday. So um, yeah, those, 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 those contracts, they pay like $31 or something. They from less than a dollar. So that, that, that was huge. So uh, Boeing here is trying to, to, to get at it. I mean, it's possible. They, they finally let this thing go. Yes. If, when we start running, guys, trust me, I'm going to be the first one to be telling you after confirmation. And as usual, you know what we're going to be doing, right? You're familiar with this right now. So we're going to be bringing the, 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 the Fibonacci retracement on here because it's going to help us tremendously. We're just going to go and put it like this and say, bang. Oops, let's, let's, let's lock it down on here so that, so you use, use this tool for your technical analysis. So the 23.6% level is 153. So right now we're at 137. I will use that if I'm taking calls. I will use that because there is no room up, unfortunately, because it needs to go above outside the upper Bollinger. And the moving average uh, green line that we are seeing on there is at 156. So I'm taking the lower of the two, the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement for the call side. And obviously, if let's say it's a stall move again, but here now it's, remember what I told you guys, right? I told you guys that for me, I was using the yellow line to make my my uh, b my bearish entries every time that when it came there because it showed that to me here 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 but now we are above that yellow line meaning the trend has changed Boeing right now is on a bullish trend and you will trade with the momentum hence those 153 call or whatever the 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 the, the, the options are a little bit expensive on Boeing so just be mindful of that again you don't need to be in the money to to make uh, to 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 make um to make money, <laughs> no pun intended, in, in, in the option. As long as you're in a, in a trade and it's moving toward your direction, even with some cheap calls. But that depends on your style, obviously. If you have some capital to say, hey, you want to cash in very quickly, yes, you can day trade something if the momentum is there uh, 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 as well. So Boeing, let's see really what happens. So meaning that Boeing is a type of stock that you need to be, we need to be involved with it because of two things. Either it's going to confirm that positive momentum uh, or it will pull down. I mean, they can get it into doing sideways, but this, this was kind of sideways for two days and anything, and then they pop it on a single day. All right, so that tells us about Boeing. We talk about Hess, we talk about Gilead, we talk about American Airlines, we talked about FedEx already, we talked about Bank of America, which on the list, because, okay, I did, somebody would tell me that, hey, you didn't analyze Bank of America, guys. Well, what is this to say here? The same thing as on Wells Fargo, right? The financial XLF is their ECF, they trade similarly. They had prints. Bank of America also had prints, I believe, on Friday. Check, check it out. So, standard rule, below, below those prints, we are bearish. Above those prints, we, we, we are bullish. So, as of now, the, the, the close just above the moving average 20 at support. So, but my thing is that, I mean, it's stock that's $22. I mean, it's, it's always the same thing. And it's for me, beginning, okay, I'm going to be taking 23 and a half calls at the most. It's like, ah, oh, what am I watching? So, yeah, I don't know. I still haven't gotten used to that. We have two more on to go on the list. We have two more to go. And we are already at 35 minutes here. So, there is Caterpillar, C A T. Caterpillar. Uh, just bounced slightly uh, on the uh, exponential moving average 20 period at uh, 147. So again, this is one of the stock that, I mean, sometimes it just goes with the markets. It's another component of the Dow, just like a BA. So yeah, geez, what to do with Caterpillar? I, I, mean, I don't think that's in the stock that I've traded that much, to be honest with you. So in here, let's see, let me go back quickly and to give you the, the stats on, uh, on this signal. So this signal here on Caterpillar, uh, 27 times, that's average, of that, but 37% of the time, it's strictly bullish with uh, a, a, an up move of 2.4%. And the rest of the time when it's down, which tells us that is greater than, because the bullish one is only 37, so it actually goes down by an average of uh, minus 4%. And this is a double signal of sideways for us. So, um, yeah, I, 
I will say, I will wait for this to, so during the week, I'm going to be talking about Caterpillar. Somebody remind me that. So when it goes to 116, I want to see the behavior. So meaning for me, I'm going to be taking my short at 116. I'm going to be taking my puts at 116. I explained to you why, right? So that typically for me, I don't take my puts when the stock is already down. I'm going to be taking it when they're facing resistance and they're getting rejected then because that's where the puts are going to be cheaper. So 116 is going to be that level for me for Caterpillar. And obviously, if it blasts above 116, and you can see here why I'm taking 116, if you're not convinced, right? Last time it was there, last week it got rejected. So you, you, you could have made $4 on here. It hit a high of 117 and a low of 111. $6 in two days for a stock that's 117, that's close to 5%. Those puts actually, they will have paid. But if only you played them on the weekly call expiring last Friday. So those are the type of things that technical analysis gets you into just setting yourself up for to strike on, on, on but with great preparation. Last one for the road. Last one for the road. Who is that? That will be... Oh, <laughs> that's so fitting because the, there's actually... Okay, so let's talk about the last one that you guys have on your list. I'm going to give you a last one for the road. A true last one for the road. JD, anybody interested? Anybody? I don't, I don't have it. I sold, I sold my, um, my 50 put. We closed below 50 put. I need actually to reply to somebody on YouTube. Somebody, people want me to answer technical questions on, on YouTube. I don't know how, how they figure that that how it goes. People asking me, oh, do you think that such and such stock going to do that on YouTube? Seriously. So uh, we closed below 50. So folks, if we are following the trend, this is another trade that you have to be in the trade. You have to trade this guy because in the middle of nowhere, hence, a decision will have to be rich. <laughs> Either we're gonna come and bounce here off of the, the, the exponential moving average 20 at 48 and a half and then go back up, or we're gonna come back down below. So uh, the trend is your friend on here. And as usual, uh, you know that if I'm trading this, I want to carry it overnight because it has tendency to gap. When I say the word gap, folks, I'm not saying gap up. Gap up meaning I think that it's going to be uh, jumping up. Gap just means that there's going to be a movement either upside or down. So uh, just like, look at it here. Start starting on Wednesday. Gap, gap down, gap down. So hence, in order for you to make the most out of this trade, you will have needed to take the trade at the end of it. That's the reason why for us, we say that this very video, not the videos, these very alerts, I'm going to be providing them every single Friday at 12 uh, Pacific, which is 3 p.m. Eastern, such that you have a good hour and you will be prepared because you know that they will be coming uh, a good uh, hour to make the decision if there are certain stocks that are candidate for gapping on Monday. That's way if there's any opportunity, you don't miss on to that. So that's the last one that you guys have on the road. But I couldn't possibly go without talking about the stock of last week, right? You guys know it, I think. Baidu. No, 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 it wasn't Baidu. I don't want to buy Baidu is, is that support. I want to talk about Baba. I want to talk about Baba because, uh, again, just like NVIDIA, second day after the, the, the earning. So we didn't have a trade out of this. It didn't do anything. We were expecting a reversal at some point. Mm -mm, mm -mm, those computers, they were, man, this was brutal. So the question is, what's going to happen tomorrow? What percent potentially? Because but I can tell you right now, guys, folks, for me, my trade is 180, 180, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I, I always go, guys, my strength, my, my where we're picking strength, I go wherever support or last time where we have the closest amount of, uh, of prints. So of, not prints, um, touches. So this level on here, 185 or so, 185 puts, okay, or lower if I'm trading for next June expiration, June fifth expiration for for the puts, and then if it's bouncing back, geez, they make it go up in three days from from less than two hundred to yeah, literally from two hundred to two twenty before dropping it. What is to say that they're not gonna just go back right up? Strangle candidate, folks. Strangle candidates. Cheap money. So twenty twenty calls, hundred eighty five puts. There you have it. In about four, in a 40 minute time, uh, we were able to go over more than 15 stock. You guys will agree. So let's hope that uh, we make most of it and uh, we will be here again. You have the monthly folks, you do have free one, at least one, one, yeah, one, please see if you're monthly, one free 
uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching, please make usage of it. Make usage of it. I encourage you that. We are here to learn. So it's not just about going and executing trade. We actually have at least that, that, that's how, how I conceived I conceived it. Thank you very much. We'll talk later. Bye-bye. Hello, good afternoon, subscribers.